Hey guys, and welcome to another aggressive Vandal match commentary video, where I talk through my thoughts and gameplay to help you understand what's going on, and maybe even help you improve your own gameplay. This match gets real crazy near the end with multiple enemies to deal with at the same time, but I managed to survive and win the game with 10 kills. We start this match at one of my favourite high tier loot spawn locations, the Burning Church. All of the loot can be found inside the rooftop section, so getting there first is a priority over anything else, so using any abilities you have to get there faster is always worth it. I end up choosing two medium to close range weapons over the sniper rifle as I knew I'd be pushing enemies. Having seen the fleeing prowler who arrived too late to get any weapons, I cut them off over the rooftops with a slam and with my purple tommy gun they were quickly dealt with. The fact that I only dealt 170 damage meant that they'd taken some damage from a fire on the church roof. After all, it isn't called the burning church for nothing. After grabbing a dive to unlock a buff slot, I quickly come across another player who was most likely pushing gunshots. I try to get the high ground and leap so I don't lose sight of the enemy, and end up using my slam to close the distance after doing a bunch of damage so that they couldn't escape and heal up. With shots incoming from nearby, I decide to heal up by using my fire axe to finish the downed enemy before the danger got too close. But with the player getting closer, I drop down to break the line of sight and use my armor plate and newly acquired syringe before going on the offensive. I use my focus ability so that I could hear if the enemy was pushing me and end up seeing them run past the archway. So once healed up, I head for the high ground, but I wasn't expecting what I found. After climbing the relatively quiet area, I stumbled across multiple enemies who seemed to be too busy shooting each other to notice me turn up. I make a shocking entrance and deal with the remaining player as I get shot from behind. No point in finishing the other downed enemy yet. I'm not under any immediate pressure and I can always let them revive and deal with them later. I make sure the person who was shooting me previously wasn't pushing and even take some shots in case I could get an easy down. But with the enemy getting further away, I decide to jump down to the other player who had time to revive and was now planning their great escape. Unfortunately, budget cuts were made, so I had to remove a long and expensive chase scene and instead put a quick alleyway diablery. Hit subscribe to increase funding for the next video or comment how you think the chase could have ended. I grab the nearby melancholic buff as I move towards Terrace where I hope to find some more enemies with it being a popular spot. I was also on the hunt for a golden SMG which would be more precise than the Tommy gun I currently had, and with the Camarilla chest being unopened, I knew that the area had not been looted and my hopes were high. With no sign of any nearby players and my hopes of an SMG being crushed with my poor RNG, I head to the rooftops to the west in hope of seeing a lost enemy wandering around with no cover. Unfortunately, there must have been a party somewhere that I was not invited to, because the rooftops were empty. Feeling a little left out, I needed a pick-me-up, so I dropped down to street level to go bully some mortals and gain some resonance buffs. I take extra care to scare off one of the mortals so that I can feed in peace without causing an unwanted blood hunt. But for some reason, through no fault of my own, a nearby mortal noticed what I was up to. I gave him an evil stare as he ran away, but this meant that I missed the minimap ping of a nearby enemy, so I continued gathering sanguine buffs with there being an abundance nearby, blissfully unaware of the incoming danger. I kept a lookout for any incoming players, but with no signs of immediate danger, I was getting complacent and instead of moving away from the area immediately after getting my last passive heal buff, I make the mistake of using an armor plate out in the open, and you will see why this was a bad idea in just a second. Meet Steve. Steve is normally a very generous and giving person, but for some reason in this match, he was all out of kindness for the day and was on a mission to fill my body with lead. I managed to break the line of sight and find some cover in case he was right behind me, but with no bullets flying my way, I backed up a little more to use the armor plate I had originally planned on using before heading back out. My passive heals and syringe had me quickly back to full hit points, and I waited a few seconds for my slam cooldown before leaping into an aggressive push. I tried to play around the car while staying mobile, so I wasn't an easy target, and even though Steve's wall jump caught me by surprise, I managed to dodge enough shots and get the down having swapped to my assault rifle. I had learned from my previous mistake however, and finished Steve off in the most humane way possible by launching a fire axe through his skull before putting some distance from the area to avoid a third party surprising me mid teabag. I aim for the high ground to have more rotation options, and with the gas moving in I head for the west where the zone would move in slower, giving me more time in the area should I get myself in a fight or two. I end up visiting the nearby pharmacy to top up on consumables before heading over to demolition where I heard some shots in the distance. I push in over the rooftops while not exposing myself to potentially incoming players to the left, and try and get an easy down from a distance but the weak player managed to escape. I managed to break the armor on the other enemy, but mess up my slam, and the Nosferatu manages to escape with little help remaining. I head for the high points to try and find the weak player, but with no visual, I had to rely on sound cues. 
I could have used my focus ability, which would have helped me out. But with the enemy using his vanish ability, I hear him nearby, so there was no need. Having a good idea where the enemy was hidden, I leap over and shoot them in the back. No need for the slam, as I knew they wouldn't be difficult to take out, and it could always come in handy if a third party was to turn up. A quick dive so I could find a third melancholic buff, and then off to find some more action. I had to be careful in case the Torador who was being shot as I turned up was still nearby. I grab my resonance buff and the scourge blades, and hurry over to the nearby gunshots. This is where the match got real crazy, as it wasn't just two people having a casual fight, and it turned out that most of the remaining players in the match were all somehow involved. As I get closer, I start to realise that there were much more than two or three weapons being used, and that the sounds were coming from multiple directions. A more patient person might have climbed the building to my left to get an overview of what was happening where, before pushing in. But all I could hear was more potential eliminations being stolen by multiple enemies. I push in aggressively to take out the first enemy without losing any hit points, but as I head out to finish them, I get attacked from above, leaving me in a bad situation with little cover. I try to play around the cars and stay mobile to avoid as many shots as possible, but I was also receiving damage from behind, so I had to make a mid-fight push to get to the other side of this player, or I'd become the cheese in someone's vampire sandwich. I watched the fight back in slow-mo, and with my passive regeneration I was able to gain 60 hit points while fighting. This absolutely saved my life and is something you need to take into account when dealing damage to other players. Just because you hit them for 199 damage, doesn't mean they are going to be one hit point when they pop their head out. This can be amplified with Brute's passive and syringes, so expect the worst each time. Unfortunately, by the time I got back to finish the down player, they were self-reviving, and with his spawn protection, they were able to tank a few hits and leap away. I had fully healed up though, so I had a major advantage in the fight, and would only have to do 80 damage to secure the down once more. This also meant that the Torador that I downed earlier had also revived, and could be nearby, so I armor up in a safe spot and head to the high ground in search of any of the remaining enemies. To my surprise, it was awfully quiet considering the battlegrounds that this area had been only moments ago. I was certain that at least one player would still be in the surrounding area, and I didn't want to push into the next zone with someone behind me. So with a minute and a half on the clock, and the zone only a building or two away, I had plenty of time to secure the area. Soon enough I came across one of the remaining survivors from a previous battle who had no idea I was lurking on the rooftops like a cheap Batman. With the height advantage I was able to easily deal some damage and get a surprise slam in from above. The enemy desperately tried to defend themselves, but it was too late for a comeback. Even their Scourge Blades couldn't save them. I assert dominance by diabolizing the defeated enemy and stealing his golden SMG. Happy that the area was now secure with only two enemies remaining, I heal up and begin my journey to hunt them down. The road was long and filled with parkour skills, but with the magic of editing it appeared to only take a few seconds. I attempted camping the edge of a tiny zone, but being unable to sit still for more than two seconds at a time, I push into the unknown in search of some action. Turned out that action found me. This vandal was unable to make the most of their slam, and I managed to weaken them to half of their hit points before they hit the ground. Finishing them off with my weapon wouldn't be too difficult, but it turned out that this vandal was more of a hands-on kind of person, and tried blocking the incoming shots with their sword. Of course all I had to do was wait until they were no longer doing the helicopter to simply shoot a load in their face. I finish them off quickly and head out before the last person came. Now that would sound bad out of context. The last player must have missed their bus however, as it took me another 95 seconds of patrolling the penultimate zone to eventually find them exiting the red gas. I took them out with a smooth slam and tracking with my SMG. This turned out to be the slippery Torridor who had escaped near death multiple times this match, so I decided to mark the victory with a Diablory. Make sure you like the video and subscribe with notifications on for more Blood Hunt content.